So before we can get that radiator shroud out with the electric fan, what we're gonna have to do is we've got a total of three plastic Christmas tree fasteners holding a plastic air dam up under that we've gotta pop loose. So we get up in there with our little tool that we've been using already to try to get the front off. We'll try to get down in there the best we can with the camera rolling. A little tight squeeze. There's one, two, and we got one more, and then we can move back to getting the fan out. This one could be a little difficult. And there we go, we got all three loose. Now we can go ahead and drop the vehicle back on the ground or crawl back up on top, whichever you're gonna be doing. And we'll get the bolts out for the fan. All right, so now we're back to the top of the engine compartment and we're gonna work on getting the shroud out. It's got the electric fan. And you got one main connector for electric fan. You just gotta squeeze in on the lock and then slide the connector off, sit to the side. Now it's held in place with two eight millimeter bolts. You can find them directly up under the radiator neck over here, as well as directly up under the radiator hose up here. I'm going to go ahead and start getting them off. Now the bottom of the fan sits in a little track, so that's why it only uses two bolts. The bottom of the track actually holds it in place. Now your AC line's a little bit in the way over here on the driver's side. I'm just using a long extension. If you need to, you can use a quarter inch ratchet with a short socket. You can get up in there as well. So there we go, we've got the last bolt. Now all we should have to do is just lift it straight up. We'll go ahead and get it out of the engine compartment. So there you go, if that's you taking your fan off, you've got your fan, you got you ready for your replacement fan. All you're gonna do is line it down in there. Make sure the bottom two go into a little groove. And then you're gonna line it up, put your bolts in, hook your connector up, and go ahead and reinstall the uh, Air box as well as the upper plastic shroud and the lower. At this point we need to go ahead and drain the coolant. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you with the replacement radiator off the car because where it's located on the Jeep is a little hard to get to. So you've got two options. You can put your big catch pan up under the vehicle and you take the hoses off, let everything go in there, or if you want to try to control the flow and where it's going, then you can gain access to the radiator drain. The radiator drain is just a basic screw out, kind of a corkscrew style. It goes to a point and it stops, but as it turns, it does come outward. Now, this location right here that I'm pointing to is the drain. Now, this side of the radiator is the passenger side, and where the drain is, is facing the bumper. So uh, it's kind of hard to see visually without getting up under the vehicle and maneuvering, taking a few things off. But uh, that's where it's located. Um, I've got me and if you can get a pair of pliers in there, you're great. Um, if not, I've got no quarter inch socket that I've actually cut and made a groove in. And it will actually fit over the end of the drain. And then I can actually get up in there with a quarter inch ratchet and I can back it out. That's how I'm going to be doing it now. Like I said, if you don't have access or don't want to fight with getting that, taking the hoses off will be fine. So now you know where it's located. It's not that easily accessible. So I'll give you the option which one you want to try. Now we got our interface draining. We can move on to getting the upper radiator hose off and the lower as well. Uh, this particular upper is held on with a regular radiator hose clamp that you can back out with a screwdriver. Customers replace it at some point or another. I guess they assume that's where the coolant leak was coming from. So we'll go ahead and take that one off, set the hose off to the side, and then we'll start getting down here to the lower hose. Now, on the lower hose, you got a spring loaded clamp. I'm just using a regular spring loaded clamp remover. Go ahead and get up on here. You can use a pair of pliers if you want. These just hold on better. Go ahead and work on getting that clamp out of its way. Then I can start working on getting the hose off. Now you may have some antifreeze spillage. Uh, so go ahead and just watch where you're going. Make sure you got a container, a drain pan or something underneath. There we go. We've now got that hose off. Now all we got to do about worrying about getting the AC condenser unbolted from the radiator. So what I want to do in order to help me do that is I want to go ahead and unbolt the radiator from where it is and let it lean forward a little bit because where the bolts are on the front for the condenser are a little bit tight to get to. 
So we've got two 10 millimeter bolts. One located directly up under the filler neck right here, kind of a little recess in the little pocket area here. And we got one on the other area right here below the filler neck. So we'll go ahead and get those off. Now the way the radiator mounts to the vehicle is basically like that electric fan shroud was. Two bolts and then it sits down in a little area that the bottom has little fingers to mount. They, they sit into. So as you can see we've got now movement in our radiator. So now we can work on getting to the bolts for the AC condenser from the front. 